vision is an angel that uh, the spirit of God, when he's able to take control of your viewpoint of God's ability to take care of you, and you really have the understanding that the Lord is not short in his hand to take care of you and provide for you, the angel of abundant provision can start to minister in one's life. What is the angel of abundant provision? What does his main objective, what does he want to do the most? He wants to fulfill the abundant life plan of God for a person. So angels have job to fulfill the word. They have a job to fulfill the word and the word promise I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Well, the angel of abundant provision was there when there's the multiplication of the five loaves and two fish. The Bible said that there was 5,000 men there. 5,000 men was in attendance. And they was told to sit on the grass. The Lord takes the five loaves, two fish, gives thanks, and supernaturally there's food from heaven on earth. This provision came from the angel of abundant provisions, the angels and the ministering spirits that are a part of God's economy, his cafeteria, his provision. That's why as a child of the Lord, you have to have understanding of the provisional power of God, how it works is beyond natural timing and natural circumstances. There's nothing in this life that could stop the provision from getting to you if you believe. If you believe that you receive it, you shall have it. Nothing could stop it but you. Provision is not a problem for God. This is how man and earth and worlds have been created by him. Because he's a provider. He provided the world. He provided the water. He provided the trees. He provided the sand. He provided the animals. He provided man. He provided life, oxygen. He provided provision. He provided food. He's a provider. Now, I, I want you to remember this statement. God is frustrated in the life of anybody that doesn't let him provide from the realm of his greatness. You could block God from providing in the realm of his greatness because you are not you are not even letting that high place of anointing rest in your brain that this is what gives God joy taking care of you richly. This is what gives God joy when he could give you plenty. This is what gives God joy when you have your hair done, when your nails are done, when you smell good, when you're living good, when you have nice things, when good things happening for you. Do you know what the gospel is about? It's about good news. So imagine God created an avenue of his power to send good news your way so that you could be happy. He told the disciples, ask what you will, that your joy may be full. So the Lord's mind is a friend of your joy. It's disobedience that messes up your joy. It brings sorrow. It's the curse in your activities, in your personality, your focuses, your relationships, your cravings. That's what brings sorrow. But the blessing of the Lord makes you rich. The empowerment of the Lord makes you have more than enough. Now, there are angels of money. There are money cometh angels. They cause money to appear in one's life. They are financially savvy. They are financially smart. They are financially intelligent. The minister of finances does not want to see one person in the body of Christ suffer financial issues. He's there to dissolve it. He's a patriarch. He's a prophet in the financial anointing. In the angelic. And yes, the minister of finances has angels underneath him. 
He's been called by Jehovah God to train other angels in finances. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power of God in the financial anointing is, is a joy-giving, health-restoring, mind-uplifting, atmosphere-beautifying grace. It's a burden remover. Now, saints, even when God gives you a financial anointing, you're going to be opposed and confronted by demons of stress and demons of worry, even though you got finances. You have to speak words to reset your brain and renew your mind to not worry. Did you know that worry doesn't really have nothing to do with what you don't have and what you have? Because even you could have a lot and still worry. You know that, right? There's people with a lot of finances that's worried right now. There's people with a lot of provision that's worried right now. There are people right now with millions and billions of dollars, and they're worried. They're worried. Huh? What if I lose my billions? What if I lose my millions? So worry, it's a spirit that no matter what age you are in finances, what group you are in finances, it'll still oppose you. So you got to take authority over this spirit. Some of you all may think, if I just get out of my situation, I'll never worry again. No, no, no. Worry will find a place in the mind of a person that hasn't intentionally debunked it, dethroned it, defeated it. Until you defeat worry, it's going to pop up its head in another way. Because even if you get healed from something, you could worry that you're going to get it again. If you get delivered from eviction, you could get worried that you might get evicted again. You, if you get set free from a uh, 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 smoking, you can get worried that you might have that same craving again to smoke. Worry comes in every facet. And you got to be healed in your soul so that you can live this life in the God realm of reaction, the God realm of focus, the God realm of dominion. You got to dominate all the time. You can't let one moment go by where you having financial worries. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. These riches in glory is not weak riches. They're not problematic riches. They're not sorrowful riches and they're not delayed riches. They are flowing riches, everlasting riches, durable riches. They are happiness riches. They are uh, uh, plenteous riches, suddenly riches, riches that get to me by, by miracles, signs and wonders, riches that get to me by men giving into my bosom, riches that get to me by me experiencing the power of the Holy Ghost and him doing things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard and see all things are working together for my good because these riches in glory are flowing towards me. I choose not to worry. I choose not to fear. I choose not to stress out. I choose to trust in the Lord. I choose to trust in the power of God and the glory of his spirit is going to cause there to be a financial move of God in my life. I'm going to see debts canceled one by one. I'm going to see everything that pertains to my financial life come into abundance. I'm abounding with blessings. You got to learn to talk to yourself. Money cometh to me from every direction, from the north, south, east, and west. I'm increasing more and more. I am financially rich. I am very rich. The blessing of Abraham has come upon me, and I receive prosperity. I believe my prophet, and I am prosperous. I'm prospering, and I'm becoming great. I'm waxing great, just like Isaac waxed great. I'm waxing great. I'm increasing more and more. I'm prosperous, and I'm prospering. And everything that I do prospers. And my mind will know the wisdom of God. It will know the instruction of God. My brain will hear the voice of God clearly. My mouth will speak words of life. My hands will only do divine deeds. My feet will only walk in the straight and narrow path. I will only sit in the heavenly places seat. I will not commit any sin. I will not follow any error. I will not be deceived by the serpent. I have power over the serpent and the scorpion. All the powers of the enemy, nothing 
nothing by any means shall hurt me. I'm receiving my inheritance. I'm receiving overflow. I'm receiving the blessing of the Lord. I'm receiving the riches of God. I'm receiving my cup running over. I'm receiving blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in, blessed going out. I'm receiving all things that pertain to life and godliness.